What's up YouTube, I'm Mike. Today we're talking about uh, Masteron, also known as Drostanolone. Uh, I believe Masteron was actually Drostanolone propionate, um, <clears throat> but nevertheless, we're talking about Drostanolone. If you've been following my channel, then you know recently uh, I've had a mental crisis because I was not accurately able to detect that I had high estrogen when I started the mint. Um, I was convinced that I had crashed my estrogen in the toilet uh, based on the symptoms that I was experiencing and uh, it was wrong. It was totally wrong. Um, I ended up having very high, I had estrogen that was at least two times the top end of the reference range. Uh, that's at least when it was tested. Obviously, by the time I actually started treating it, it was likely far worse than that. Um, and so this has been this has been really causing me a lot of mental anguish because I had, you know so many of the things that, you know that have to do with bodybuilding are very difficult to test for. Like for example, um, mint as I mentioned aromatizes the seven alpha methyl estradiol. I cannot test for this. Um, I there, there's no way to find out exactly what my total estrogen level is because an E2 sensitive test only picks up. E2 and an estrogen test in general will pick up all kinds of shit. And so there's no way to definitively know and that just causes me no end of misery. So I set out today to start trying to um, wade through uh, the bro science. I hate, like I said, I do not want to be a person that sits in front of this camera and just regurgitates old, old wives tales basically, which is effectively what a lot of bro science is, is just old bros tales apparently because guys just continue to perpetuate all kinds of bullshit into the community. And so one of the claims that is regularly made is, um, is mas that, that, that Masteron is a CERM. That Masteron has selective estrogen receptor modulator behavior. And uh, so I set out today to find out uh, if there is any proof of this claim at all. I spent uh, not a huge amount of time, but I researched extensively trying to find any study at all that made the claim that uh, Masteron, Drostanolone propionate, is in fact a selective, a selective serotonin, uh, what am I saying, a selective, a, a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Uh, I did not, spoiler alert, I did not find any evidence of this being true in clinical data. Um, what I did find was this article that I will link in the description um, that is titled, Effect of Drostanolone Propionate on the binding of estradiol and dihydrotestosterone by normal and malignant target tissues. One of the things that was making me mental today is I could not find any studies about drostanolone on Google Scholar anywhere that I could get access to the entire study without being a member of some college or university or some facility that I had login credentials to read the entire study. I don't know why this is. Uh, I have been able to find tons and tons and tons of studies on all kinds of things, but when you go to look up Masteron or Drostanolone, very limited data out there that you can get full access to, which makes somebody in my state on a substantial amount of dopaminergic um, 19 nor compounds more than a little bit fucking suspicious. But uh, so what I have today to share with you is the abstract of this study. The abstract reads, the influence of drostanolone propionate, an anti-cancer agent, was tested on the binding of 17 beta estradiol and dihydrotestosterone to specific receptor proteins in tissues of normal and neoplastic target organs. Steroid binding capacity was measured by agar gel electrophoresis of tissue extracts. Drostanolone was found to compete with androgen binding sites, but not with estrogen receptors. Therefore, it is unlikely that the growth inhibitory effect of drostanolone propionate in human breast cancer is mediated through the interaction of estradiol binding proteins as suggested by or earlier by authors. This study was done in 1965. So what is interesting about this, well, there's a lot of things interesting, uh, this drug was, descri was first described in 1959. It was per first prescribed for the, the, the treatment of breast cancer in 1961. 
So two years after it was it was described, it was prescribed. Two years after it was created, it was it was it was given to women um, for the treatment of, of uh, ER positive breast cancers. So clearly. There could have been very much clinical data done before its creation and its prescription because they only had a total of maximum of two years to do anything with it. And then it would, they ceased uh, using it as a breast cancer drug, I believe, in 1964. I'm not positive about that. Um, but it, it, it did not, uh, it ultimately ended up not working well enough, apparently. I did find uh, previously, and I could not come up with the search characteristics that I used to find this. I did find a study, I remember sitting in the bathtub while my wife was in the shower, and I was reading to her um, some information about Masteron and how it had been uh, very effective and then was sort of like brushed under the carpet for some reason. And I cannot find that study. Uh, because I'm not making any definitive claims, I would love, love nothing more than for somebody else to do a little uh, fucking legwork for me and put forth some clinical data that maybe you have found. Maybe my Google skills are not good today. If anybody has found any clinical data um, since 1965 that shows that Masteron uh, interacts with the estrogen receptor in human tissue, I would love to see that. Because when I found out that I had high estrogen, I could not understand how this was possible. I had no gyno. I had no massive water retention. I wasn't crying at cat videos on Instagram. There was no, I, I had no signs or symptoms at all period of having high estrogen levels and yet my estrogen was two times the top end of the reference range. So one of the things that I thought and some other people suggested was maybe the Masteron was masking those, was masking the signs of high estrogen. But according to this data, it was not masking it in my breast tissue because this, this data here said that there was zero evidence of Masteron, of drostanolone propionate binding to the estrogen receptor. So based on this data, Masteron is not a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Effectively, what they're saying is we have a drug that showed some clinical efficacy for the treatment of ER positive breast cancer and we do not know why it works. One of the things that's unfortunate about this truth is that this is not isolated to steroids. Um, I, I thought I knew of a couple of drugs that worked and yet scientists didn't know why they worked. Um, the two drugs that I thought would make this list did not. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of 10 drugs that are commonly prescribed that uh, work, but nobody knows why they work. Uh, one is called Abatacept. I'm not going to give, nobody really cares, so I'm just going to give you the name of these drugs. If you care to look what each one of them up is, you know, be my guest. Abatacept is number 10. Number 9 on the list, Tylenol. Apparently nobody knows why Tylenol works. Um, number 8 is Lithium. <clears throat> number 7 is Ulipristol. Marketed as Esmaya, Esmaya, Ulipristol. Number six is Paxlovid. <laughs> oh, really? Shocking that a COVID drug made the list. Paxlovid uh, reduced the risk of COVID hospitalizations or death by 88%, but nobody knows how it worked. Um, number five is, I can't even pronounce some of this. The brand name is Bextra. The, the, the generic is Valdex, V-A-L-D-E-C-O-X-I-B. What kind of rocks were these people smoking when they named this drug? Apparently it's for rheumatoid arthritis. Feboxostat? F-E-B-U-X-O-S-T-A-T. This is a gout drug. Uh... <laughs> I'm not even attempting to pronounce this. It's called, the, the, the brand name is Zeljans. Uh, this is for some kind of cancer treatment. Paroxetine. Paroxetine is Paxil. Uh, paroxetine is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, but apparently they don't know how it works. And number one on the list is aspirin. So, <clears throat> There are a number of drugs, this, this happens not infrequently, where 
a drug will be will get discovered. I thought this happened with either uh, on Dancitron or Cyclobenzaprine. I thought maybe I'm wrong. I looked them up and they they seem to think they know how they work. On Dancitron is an antiemetic drug that is given to primarily to cancer patients who are on chemo. I use it quite frequently actually uh, because it's really good at stopping vomiting. Uh, it works on the 5-HT3 pathway, which is a serotonin pathway. So apparently, uh, serotonin receptors in the gut have something to do with nausea, and this is why this drug works. I don't think, I might be wrong, I thought they, they discovered this by accident. Uh, the other one I think is cyclobenzaprine, which is a tricyclic antidepressant, I believe, but it happens to be a really, really nice muscle relaxer if you've never had that. Um, it's quite lovely. Um, cyclobenzaprine is, what is it? Um, it might not be tricyclic. Um, fuck, I don't know. I'm not gonna waste time. Um, yeah, I don't remember what it is. Um, but I thought, I thought those were two examples of drugs that they were researching for one thing and then discovered, oh, like, so they'll, they'll develop a drug for, for a specific purpose, then they'll start giving it to patients and they'll notice that a lot of patients are having some specific side effect. And sometimes, sometimes the side effect is not a bad thing. Sometimes the side effect is a good thing. And so then they go away. Oh, hey, like this drug could be used for, to, for the purposes of this side effect. And so that's one of the things that seems to be going on with Masteron is that Masteron uh, is a DHT derivative. And one of the things that, that makes DHT derivatives something of note is that DHT itself is not a potent muscle builder because it is deactivated in muscle tissue by 3-hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase. 3-HSD is present in skeletal muscle tissue and it binds to um, DHT, reduces it, and makes it uh, useless for the purposes of building muscle. So one of the reasons that we have DHT derivatives like Masteron, Primabolin, um, well, there's another one, but I'll get to that in a second, the reason that Masteron and Primabolin are capable of building muscle tissue where DHT is not is because the modification of the DHT molecule makes it a, either not a substrate for 3-hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase or a poor substrate. This was something else that I learned during my research today is typically it is suggested that Primabolin is a more potent muscle builder than Masteron. Um, from what research I was able to do today, and I'll save some of this for another video because I was also trying to prove, to find any clinical data that proves that Primabolin is in fact an aromatase inhibitor. And while I was researching both of these topics, I found out that one, Masteron does not, it is not a substrate for 3-HSD, and Primabolin is a poor substrate for PA, for 3-HSD. So at its face, that would potentially make Masteron a more potent muscle builder than Primabolin, which may or may not be offset by the fact that Primabolin has a number of metabolites that could have activity. See how this shit works? Maybe, might, could, possibly, we don't fucking know. What we do know is that they work. That's the thing. And that's what's so frustrating when you're trying to come at this from my perspective. Those of you who just go, hey, what cycle should I run? And somebody goes, oh, take, you know, 500 milligrams of test, 600 milligrams of DECA, and you'll blow up. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. That shit doesn't work for me. I need to know why. I need to know why do I take DECA? What is happening in my body when I take DECA? What is testosterone, what is testosterone doing? What is Masteron doing? Because to me, why take Masteron if it's not doing something special? It has to have some special activity, otherwise I might as well just take testosterone, which is fucking cheap and easy to get a hold of. And so I need to understand the why something works, not simply that it does. But unfortunately, that's not always good enough. There are cases that I'm experiencing right now where um, we, I, we, the community, everybody, you know, like apparently 19 Nord drugs are progestogenic. They seem 
to cause the, cause rises in prolactin, or they seem to cause side effects that are consistent with high prolactin. And cabergoline definitively lowers pro prolactin, and cabergoline resolves the side effects that I get from 19 nor drugs. Mm, but I don't know how. But I know that they do. And so I'm not going to sit around here not taking cabergoline and being, you know, three seconds from this because I don't know how it works. I'm going to go, I'm going to side with the fact that I know that it works. It works every single time. The, 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 the science from my body is repeatable. If I take 19 nor drugs and I do not take cabergoline, I become increasingly more and more de despondent and depressed and miserable to the point where I'm about to commit Harry Carey. And so I'm not going to sit around here and waste time going, well, my prolactin level is not high on my blood work, so I guess I don't need cabergoline. I don't give a fuck what my prolactin level says. What I know is that when I take cabergoline, I feel orders of magnitude better than, than without it. And so this, unfortunately, is just where, where I'm afraid. This is what I'm, I guess I'm going to have to accept about the majority of everything that is bodybuilding. Because, you know, like Vigorous Steve did a video where he tried to ferret out the science of Primavolin. So he went and he got, he was taking like X amount of testosterone. He got his E2 level checked. It was X. Then he added a bunch of Primavolin, got it checked again, and it was lower. And so he's like, boom, Primavolin is an aromatase inhibitor. Okay. Well, I mean, that sounds good, right? It sounds good. You proved that Primavolin lowered your estrogen. Does that make it an aromatase inhibitor? Does it make it a selective estrogen receptor modulator? Does it make it something that we don't understand? All you actually proved that was in your blood work, it lowered it, it lowered estrogen. Okay, so great, that's that's awesome. I hope that it is a aromatase inhibitor. I'm using it personally right now, 400 milligrams a week, in hopes that it is. I'm going to continue taking Masteron because it seems that my gyno symptoms are substantially better while I have Masteron in my system, despite the fact that in 1965, this study clearly found that Masteron did not interact with the estrogen receptor in healthy or diseased tissue. So why does it work? You guys tell me. As always, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one.